we continue our series, Intersect. The um, idea behind Intersect, it, we, we kind of looked at that at Christmas time. Jesus is called Emmanuel, God, God with us. Uh, and, and so this is kind of a, a we kind of springing uh, from that thought that, that Jesus not only stepped into our world at, at Christmas time, but we see in, in the Bible that, that he stepped into the lives of people throughout his life. Uh, uh, and, and every time he intersected their lives, he brought his grace and his love and his life. He brought change into their lives. And because these things are written down, God's Spirit would use them to bring that intersection of Jesus into our lives uh, and to give us his gifts and, and to bring change into our lives. So that's, that's what we're, the, the, the idea behind it, this series. Today, uh, we're going to look at uh, the theme empowering friendships or empowering friendship, uh, d- dear Christian friends. Put that person up for me, Joe. Got a qu- question for you. Oh, that's a great picture. N- n- nice job, by the way. Okay, what makes a friend a real friend? I, you know, these guys, when they, they look for these pictures, and, and they, I, I'm, I'm surprised sometimes. I, I don't see them ahead of time once in a while. And, and th- this is a neat picture. Boy, those, those are friends. You can tell that this friendship just might last for 60 years. Huh? Pretty cool. I talked with somebody today as they left the church, and they told me about a friendship they had for 60 years. For 60 years. And, and this little... Uh, uh, a heart that she got from the friend that, that said that we're both aware that God has brought, ha brought made us for this friendship. It was pretty cool that what she said to me. So what, what makes a friend, a, a, a real friend? I, I had an opportunity to, to think about the friendships in my life th- this past week. And it really starts when I was very young. I had, my, my brother was four years older than I was, uh, and he was, he was the greatest. He, he was awesome. I, I, my earliest recollections, I can remember him waking me up at 6.30 in the morning, Brad, Brad. Come on, we're going to do this. Okay, okay, okay. And I'm kind of, Brad, Brad, we're going to go here. Okay, okay, okay. Brad, Brad, we're going to build the floor. Okay, we're going to, Brad, Brad. He took me everywhere. We did everything together. It, it was so awesome. And, and, and I, I, I didn't realize how special it was I, I, uh, until I was in the fourth grade. And he was in the eighth grade, how loyal he was to me, I guess I should say. Uh, you know, that, that's a pretty big stretch, fourth grade and eighth grade, right, in lives. And, and I remember he had some friends that came to the front door that wanted him to go play uh, I think it was Sandlot football. And, uh, and I was kind of hiding behind another door. They didn't even know I was there. And his friend said, hey, we want you to come, Steve, but you, you, you got to ditch your brother. You, you got to leave him here, man. You know, the, the, the little runt, that's what they call me. You, you, you got to leave him here. And my brother said to them, I'll never forget it, because I, I, w- I was thinking, okay, I guess I got to do something else. And, and he said, no, no, if my brother doesn't go, I don't go. Pretty cool stuff, huh? That's kind of being a friend. Remember, I, I played um, football with this guy, Bill, Bill Reed. He was in high school. He was my defensive tackle. I played linebacker behind him. We were we were tight. We were friends. I, I remember one game. The first time I hurt my knee, the, the pain scale was like 15 on a 10 pain scale. I mean, it, I, I was going through the roof, and, and I and I somehow got back to the defensive huddle, and and he li- in the huddle he was ahead of me, and and. Uh, and I put, I kind of leaned on him with, with most of my weight, and I said, Bill, just let me lean on you for a second. I, I got to get rid of this pain. And, and, and he's kind of hunched over, big guys. You know, at that time, anyway, he was like 6'2 and 260. Big guy, and he's in your big, low voices. All right, Brad, but, but, but not too much. My back is killing me. <laughs> uh, I remember um, three years later, uh, he, uh, he, had been, he was married already, uh, and um, he got cancer. And he called my mom uh, to get a hold of me. We hadn't seen each other in, in, in at least two years. Uh, and, and I drove up the next day uh, and felt really privileged to, to try to come alongside him and help him. I'm so scared. He had a little, little boy and, and a young wife. Uh, couldn't work because of cancer. And, and um, I got to be a friend to Bill. That's what you're supposed to do, right? Remember, I had a friend, his name was Jim. I, I roomed with him in college. We were really tight. In fact, I named one of my kids after him, basically James. Uh, and um, I remember one time he had an older sister, and, and, he's, and she was a real trial for him. But she had this huge piano that she wanted to move. It wasn't one of those old uprights, but this one was worth a lot of money. Okay, and, and for some reason, she didn't have the money to move it. She was moving out of her place. And so Jim asked me, will you help me move it? I got three other guys. I said, sure, I'll help you. And I remember it was, oh, it was through steps. You know, you had to go up and down steps and the like. And, and I've got the piano on one end, and, and these two guys tripped, and, and they fell back. And so, and so now all the way to this piano is, is in the crook of my arm, and, and it's, it's just kind of slicing my arm 
And I look at Jim's face like, I got to let this go. And his face is, God, if you let it go, it's going to break and she's going to kill me. And so I, I remember just watching this thing make this big slice down my arm for friendship. You know, for friendship. <laughs> I had a good friend in the seminary. Uh, when he first came on campus, he had no one to help him move his stuff into this apartment that was on the third floor. I don't know how he hooked up. I must have worked six hours with that guy. We'll be a friends the rest of our lives. That's how it works, huh? Friendship. And I could talk forever about my wife being my best friend. Huh? Those are real blessings. God says some stuff to us about friends. He says this. There is a friend who is closer than a brother. I'm sorry, let's start the other, up, up at the top. A friend loves at all times. At all times, a friend loves. All the time. Doesn't matter. Friend loves all the time. There's a friend who is closer than a brother. I really got to wrestle with that one because I had a pretty cool brother, right? But I, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll take it. It's word of God. I'll take it. Wounds from a friend can be trusted, but an enemy multiplies kisses. A friend will be honest with you. Whoa, that's something. I, I really like the next one. Don't forsake your friend. Uh, may, maybe because I learned loyalty when I was in the fourth grade. My brother showed me. I, I, I don't know. Just don't, don't, don't forsake your friend. And then what Jesus said, greater love has no one than this, that he laid down his life for his friends. I really like that one. Go ahead, John. You know, I could stand up here and talk about my friends forever, but hopefully you're thinking about your friends about now. The friends that you had when you were little, the friends you had when you were growing up, the friends that you've made as adults, the friends you made at school. Maybe, maybe your husband or wife being your best friend, whatever, whatever it might be. Hopefully you're, you're thinking about your, close, your friends. What are your closest friends? A- and the craziest thing you have ever done for friendship. I think that piano thing was about the craziest thing I ever did. But anyway, yeah, the, the craziest thing you have ever done for friendship. I know this is a little strange. What I'd like you to do is get in groups of three and four. If you don't know each other, introduce yourself. You might make a new friend, okay? And talk about these two things, your closest friends and the craziest thing you ever did for friendship. One. <laughs> I have to tell you, this is great. <laughs> yeah. the, the, this is great. The, the, the first two services, they, they were just dying for me to come up here and say five, four, three, two, one. I can't stop you guys at all. That's cool. So that, that, that was great stuff. Um, our story, our Bible story, our, uh, about when Jesus intersects with the lives of people is really about friendship. Put that up for me, Joe. Jesus had come home. Uh, it's a funny thing to call uh, the city of Capernaum, but it was his place, um, his, his center uh, 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 where, he, where he had good people, where Peter lived, and it was known as his home, kind of his hometown. And he came home, uh, and he began to teach people in a house. And the house filled up with people to, to the rafters, you know, just filled up with people. And then people gathered around the house at the door and the windows. And, 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 so, and so pretty soon it was just, you just had this ball of people around this house. There was no way getting through. Have any of you um, taken um, a, a little child to a, 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 a parade and, and you're there late? I always got there late with my kids. That's why I asked. And, and, and so we're, we're sitting behind these people, you know, with the big heads, right? And, 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 the, and, and my kids would say, I can't see, I can't see. So you, so you pick them up and you put them on your shoulders, right? So now they can see. But then what happened? I can't hear, I can't hear. So then amidst all of the dirty looks, uh, you, you, you kind of wind your way through the crowd, right? So you can get right up front so they can see and hear the parade. You couldn't do that here. The people were too packed together. You couldn't even begin to get through them. They were all there to see and hear Jesus. But there was a group of friends who were friends of a man who had, had palsy. He uh, could walk. And, and they would do anything to get this man in front of Jesus. And so they went up on the roof, and they tore this big hole in the roof. Now, you know, if, if you're like me, I remember this story when I was, uh, you know, a, a little boy, and they just showed some palm branches or something on the roof. That wasn't the truth. I did a little research. They, they had the beams and, and the branches. Then they had this, this thick layer of clay. It was like this. 
right? And they patted this thing. You ever seen the road work people with the big rollers? They had something like that that they pushed around. All right, so it was packed down, and it was really thick. They had to do a lot of work to get, to get through the, 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 the ceiling, right, the, the, the roof. And can, can you imagine what that was like inside? Hey, what's going on up there, right? You, you think they would have said, oh, that's nice. They're, they're, they're wrecking my roof, you know? I mean, we, we know P- Peter's house was in this city. If it was Peter's house, how do you think, now think about Peter. How do you think he would have responded? Oh, yeah, he would have been ticked, all right? Really ticked. What are you doing in my house, right? That's what it would have been like. And it wasn't just a little peak hole. They ripped a hole big enough in this roof for a man to be dropped through. Man, they laid their lives on the line. Think about that. This huge crowd. You ever got a crowd mad at you? <laughs> Good luck, right? It turns into a mob. They laid their lives on the line that they could lower their friend down in front of Jesus. They raised the roof <laughs> so that their friend could see Jesus. And, and when Jesus came in front of him, he gave him the best thing, the best gift that any friend could ever give him. He said simply, your sins are forgiven. Now what does that mean, your, your sins are forgiven? You see, God created us to, to live in friendship with him, to live in relationship with him. He created us, the Bible says, in his image. Now, think about who God is. He's, he's Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. He's dwelled in community in relationship, in friendship, in loving friendship from eternity. So when God created us in his image, he created us for relationship, for friendship with him and through him with one another. The basis of sin is that we turned away from that friendship. And when you turn away from a friendship, when you break a friendship, There's only one way to put it back together. Somebody's got to say, I'm sorry, and somebody has to say, I forgive you. Isn't that right? I mean, when you're on the outs with your wife, huh? and you fouled up, you say, I'm sorry, and your wife says she forgives you. And now you've got relationship restored. I should know that happens a lot to me. Mm -hmm. Jesus comes and restores relationship the friendship of God with this man. That's what he does in, in the forgiveness of sins. And what he does here, though, is he lays his life on the line. Immediately, the, the, the Jewish leaders, the scribes and the Pharisees, said, wait a minute, only God can forgive sins. He's blaspheming. You know what, the, the, you, you know what, someone, what happened to someone when they, were, they blasphemed? They were stoned to death on the spot. They lost their lives. Jesus laid his life on the line so that this man could know him as his greatest friend. Jesus not only laid his life on the line, he gave up his life so that you could know the same thing. So that you could know God as your wondrous friend who who created you that you might live every moment of your life in Him. Our, our lives, we, we struggle with, with emptiness. Uh, we struggle with, with hurt. We, we struggle with blowing up relationships. We, we struggle with so many things because we were created only to have fullness through God, through this friendship with God. And, and it's what we've lost. And it's why Jesus came to, to give you this friendship again with God. To, to give you every moment that you breathe this, this life with him. It meant so much to Jesus that he not only put his life on the line, but as your wondrous good friend, he willingly laid down his life so that you could have life the way it was meant to be. Life in the fulfillment of friendship with God. Only, 
only as we, by the power of God's Spirit, he's touching hearts right now, by the way, only as by the power of God's Spirit, he touches our hearts with the reality of what Jesus Christ has done for us and his grace, his undeserved love. Only as we grow in this reality of this relationship with God as our wondrous good friend, can we live in the gift of friendship that God gives us throughout our lives the way we were meant to? In a way that, that we can lay down our lives for our friends. Who do you know in your life? Who is a friend in your life? And it might be your husband, your wife, or children, or a guy you work with, somebody you go to school with, somebody you sit next to. Who do you know in your life? It could be a neighbor across the street, whoever it might be, that, that you need to raise the roof to show them the love of Jesus and to show them the face of Jesus, to lay them before Jesus. That's the calling, the holy calling we have in friendship. It's a calling to do whatever it takes to live in the love of Jesus towards them and to bring them at the feet of Jesus. Whatever roof we have to blast through, whatever roof we have to raise. We can begin to do that because we know that Jesus Christ has done it for us. So this is what I want you to do. I get back into our groups, okay? And I'm hoping <laughs> that through all this, maybe somewhere the Lord's Spirit has laid a friend on your heart or your mind, okay? And, and, and talk about who that friend is. It might be a name. If you don't want to get that personal, you could say this person I'm thinking of. And, 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 I, and I want you to pray about in your group. Hopefully there's one person in your group. Hopefully there's more. But hopefully there's at least one that's comfortable praying that will pray then for these friends that you, that you laid out for one another. And that, and that God would help you to know what it means to raise the roof that they might know the love and life of Jesus Christ. Does that make sense? Go to it. And I'll walk around. Four, three, two, and one. Okay, please look up at the screen real quick here. Please look up at the screen. This is uh, in, in your in your bulletins. That stuff we started to use when the, that thing we started to use when the screens uh, didn't work. Uh, I've got this in there. It says make a list, maybe only one, maybe many more friends that God is laying on your heart. Uh, this is kind of a process. All right, as as uh, it's kind of interesting as, as I've talked to people throughout the morning. David uh, uh, Chittister being one, he, he didn't remember any, uh, any friends that didn't, in the first service, in the second service, he, he was telling me how his brother wrote a book and it was called Crazy Things with David. Cra cra and that was about him, Crazy Dave stories, yeah. So, I mean, you know, you start thinking and, and things, things start to click. So, uh, f uh, to pray about the friends you can write down. What does it mean for each one for you to take the roof off so that they might know or know better Jesus and his love? Pray for the opportunity, boldness, and courage to act in each one's life and the love you know in Jesus by the power of the Holy Spirit. I pray that God would lead you in this little exercise this week and really maybe just a start uh, to maybe change the way we see things with friendships as we go along. Let's, let's pray real quick. Heavenly Father, uh, we praise your name that Jesus calls us friends. We praise your name for one another. We're friends. We pray, Lord, uh, for these folks that you've laid on our hearts and on our minds that you might indeed in empower us to see how we can raise the roof do whatever we need to do to show them the love of Jesus and to show, bring them to the feet of Jesus. We pray in your most blessed name. All God's people say, Amen. Yes. And we stand to confess.